Hey. Hello. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Facebook friends. So, I know everybody's been asking me what's going on. I've kind of been a little mysterious with my posts lately. And, um, but throwing in some little hints here and there. Wondering what the heck Gina and Brian are up to now. Yeah, right. Never a job. So, we are here in, um, Hollywood, California. Well, no, we're right in... Right now, we're in Santa Monica. Yeah, we're in Santa Monica. We're not in Hollywood, Julia. So, um, drastic times call for drastic measures. And um, this guy right here has been fighting for how many years? 40 years. So, he's had um, lots of blows to the head. And, um, yeah, it wasn't so good. So... I couldn't get the answers I needed in you Rhode Island. Them, no. So I had to figure out something else so I could help Brian. Go the extra mile. <laughs> Go the extra mile for. So uh, I called Dr. Phil. Yep. I called Dr. Phil and I said, uh, please help because we have a serious situation happening here. Yeah, man. For this former champ. And. Um, Dr. Phil replied. And that's IBF interim world champion. Twice. Two times. And so Dr. Phil took it seriously and he was very empathetic okay. for Brian. Once he saw Brian's brain scans that he had, uh, Dr. Jabro, who is a world renowned oh, he's, he's radiologist a... and neurologist. One second, I gotta get my food. And, um, so yeah, Dr. Jabro did some in-depth MRIs that uh, we would have never been able to get done in Rhode Island. And um, we found out that Brian had some significant brain damage. Hey guys. So Dr. Phil was amazing. We filmed a show last Monday. Unfortunately, you know, like I said, drastic times call for drastic measures, and I had to air some had to air some dirty lies about um, my love of my life because he was suffering, and everybody just thought he was just a bad guy, but he's not actually. He's actually a really amazing individual, and I I was on a mission for the last few years to get him to be all that he could be, but. Um, All it can be right now so, is a steak, a steak, sirloin steak uh, burger. Um, we're going to eat right now because we have to wait. So here's your makeup. Thank you. We have to wait for, uh, for filming. So um, anyway, <laughs> eat, babe. I'm going to eat. All right. Plus, then I gotta get on my. Uh, so I had to, exercise. I had to uh, air some dirty laundry, which you guys will all see on the show. And um, that man's but dead. It was the choice I had to make in order to save Brian's life, actually. So. Um, and you know what? On the show and on stage, um, I was like, I was like, oh my god, how could you, you? I, I, man. He wasn't listen. happy. I wasn't happy? He wasn't happy with the videos I had yeah, to submit. Yeah, no, absolutely not. But he was good. He didn't get up and walk off the stage, which I thought he would, because he would be so embarrassed, whatever. But he did really well. And, um, and he really oh, wanted you, to get well. So, <laughs> so we're going to go back, um, today for some more filming um, and stuff. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? I'm trying to eat right now, so we'll get back to you guys. Soon. I had grub. This dude yeah, can grub. grub. Anyway, so, so yeah, I, um, 
she embarrassed her. Initially, it looks like an ugly story, you know, but it's not. It's an incredible victory. So Dr. Phil has sent Brian, and he hooked him up with this world-renowned doctor, Dr. Jabro, and he's been undergoing the treatment that you guys probably saw. I've been posting. Yeah, yeah. Um, My fries are in there. And um, yeah, Dr. Phil's amazing. I mean, ugh, incredible yeah. experience. I'm, I'm grateful that we were blessed with this opportunity and uh, everybody keep praying for Brian because it's this whole thing hasn't been easy it hasn't been easy for me as as um, his fiance but also even on the other end of the spectrum me as um, an advocate for drug addicts and a advocate for domestic violence victims of domestic violence and as a uh, recovery Did you coach, you cool? no, and as a chaplain and an ordained minister and all of those, you know, certificates I got that I that helped me in my ministry when I work with people that have, that struggle with a lot of issues, um, you know, from that perspective, um, it's been a challenge. I, I used every tool in my toolbox. I mean, this was a very difficult and unique case. Um, you know, professionally speaking, but you know, just like I fight for anybody else that I work with, I fought for Brian and maybe even a little more so because you know, this no, guy, but... I'm gonna marry this guy right here, so had to make sure that everything was right before we go ahead and do that, right? So, yeah, babe. um, thanks, that is yours. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we appreciate you guys' prayers that um, we still got about 12 more treatments, 12 more treatments. So we're here in California. We're here for another, uh, another week. We're here for another week. Treatments twice a day. We had to drive an hour or 45 minutes just to get to the treatment. So it's like three hours a day just driving. Oh, sweet potato fries. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah, those were mine, but. Okay. I didn't know that. That's Sorry. all right. Oh, no, yeah. They got two sweet potato fries. All righty. One regular fry. He's not easy to deal with. He's a yeah, handful. Right, yeah. He's a handful. Yeah, but no, I'm not. Anyway, so that's what's been going on. That's why you saw us at Paramount Studios and, you know, uh, the videos of his treatment and all of that. And, Everybody was wondering, Gina, what are you doing now? Where are you now? <laughs> so, oh, so that's wait. the story. Wait. And I want to say to those haters, and some maybe not, but you know that kept going up to my wife. Fiance, no. They would say to her, Gina, what are you doing with him? Hey, me, 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 me. Listen, this is what she was doing with me. Yeah, so now, that's go true. ahead and speak. Right, you don't have to be. You know, no, I'm relax, not being cocky. I'm, I'm being confident. All right, that's difference. good. That's good, and that is true. And actually, Dr. Phil and I talked about that on the show. Like, the first question everybody's like, Gina, what are you thinking? You know? And I said, What am I thinking? You know, that's like asking a firefighter, um, Why do you run into burning buildings? Yeah. Why does a firefight, why does a firefighter run into a burning building? Yeah. Because well, he wants to put the fire out. Not only that, they want to see, you know, they want to rescue anybody that's in the burning building and they need to put the fire out so it doesn't burn down the rest of the town, right? All the people that are still alive. So it's like rescue and, you know, extinguish. And so when I saw that there was a um, five alarm fire happening in Brian's world, right. I, um, it's my instinct. That's just who I am. I, I do it for anybody. You know, um, Broken Chains Ministries, right? This is what we do. We're, we're warriors. We're firefighters, spiritual firefighters. And so 
I saw the blazing fire in him and I, and I ran in. And I knew that I may get burned. I knew that I may suffer smoke inhalation. I knew that it, it may take an army to help me put the fire out. I knew that I would be exhausted. I knew that I would have to take some punches. I knew, I knew full well what I may experience when I ran into that burning, you know, five alarm fire. So, Inferno, you know, inferno. Inferno, yeah. So I'm not a victim. I'm, um, I'm just the one who's champion, championing, well, how do you say it? What? Championing, champion, champion your cause. I'm championing, I can't say it. <laughs> championing, championing. Champion, champion your cause, whatever. Well. So, you know, I mean, I thought, if I can do this, then the cycle of destruction will end and there won't be any other people that will get burned in his uh, fire, if you let will. Me say so. And I will say this, and must say this, that all those uh, other individuals that feel as though they don't have no hope, <clears throat> the most important thing in, 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 in everybody's life is to get a second opinion. Please get a second opinion. Or a third. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Or maybe even a fourth. Who knows? But. Yeah, we were told it was We were not... told otherwise. Yeah. From other doctors. Yeah. From home. Yeah. Uh, that this and that was the case. That I didn't need certain things. Just put and, him in rehab. He's yeah, an addict. Yeah. It's, you know, and to all those people that... Or just toss him to the curb, basically. That's, yeah. you know, like, get rid of him. And I quote, I quote, I've been told that. Yeah, give not by a, not by doctors, obviously, uh, yeah. but you know, you know, counselors or whatever. You know, Gina, you got to save yourself, kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm good, I can handle it. You know, but actually, very but good. But there were, you know, friends, family, people. You know, like even quote, my own family. Get rid of him, and that just made me so angry. Like, what? Who? What? This man is a human being. He's a child of God and Jesus died for him and bled for him just as much as he bled for any hum other human being. So those who, you know, maybe, I don't know. I just, that, that, those words get rid of him. Don't, don't register in my brain because guess what? Nobody got rid of me when I was a, five alarm fire when I was a hot mess if people just got rid of me I'd be so, dead I wouldn't be so, here so I must say this right when years ago when Gina was an addict okay and she could probably finish the story but I don't know the whole thing but they sent her to Virginia and it was almost like a setup she was out there in the streets, but she didn't want to leave the streets. I didn't want to leave the streets. But she got set up, and the individual waited for her. Yeah. Waited for Jean, her. Jean, my sister. Jean. The yeah, hi, Jean. She waited for me so, in my house. She washed my clothes. She packed my she suitcase watching? and sat in my house and waited for three days for me to come yeah. home off of a two-week crack mission. Yep. And when I came home, when I, I called her on my way home and I said, and I was so mean to her and I said, well, I'm coming home, but I'm going to, I'm going to drink the rest of my vodka and I'm going to smoke my cigarettes and I'm going to blow the smoke right in your face. Wow. So if that's okay with you, I'll be right there. And she was like, okay, come on home. Yep. And I went home like a cranky, you know what? And I did exactly what I said I was going to do. And I sat there and I blew the smoke right in her face. And she knew eventually I was going to probably need a nap, and to say endured. the least. She endured. She endured the, 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 you know, I, 
I can honestly say that I wasn't aware of my behavior as an addict, a former addict, um, because I don't, I, I didn't notice my behavior. So this treatment, we all did. This treatment is awesome, man. It's, I'm remembering things that I would normally not remember. I would ask you, know, like, when did that happen? Well, I'm saying the truth. Truth be told that this is an amazing treatment that I'm extremely fortunate to have Dr. Phil practically uh, hook me up with, with a doctor top of the line. I'm so talking Vester about- Sylvester Stallone was here the other day. And Sylvester Stallone We were was coming here. in, he was coming out. And he knew I was here. No, we didn't see him. We didn't yeah. see him. But Sylvester doctor... Stallone knows who I am? Mm -hmm. Like, really, dude? Doc was like, yep. Hey, Connie. And... Well, hey, Julie. So, so he might come in and meet me and stuff because yeah. he knew who we'll I was. We'll get to meet Sly before we leave. Yeah. But, man, listen. Never, never, never assume that the first opinion that you get from a doctor is the right opinion you know because there's something wrong about that well yeah i i wasn't happy about yeah what like we were really told that's before. all he needs yeah his salads we were told he had minimal brain damage and that is so far from the truth he has significant damage I, I, I was shocked when I saw the images on the screen, you know, on the huge screen and in the, on the on the set of Dr. Phil, because that's when we first saw the results of Ryan's brain scan. Uh, was actually when we were filming the Dr. Phil show. I I, I was jealous. I was crushed. I I couldn't believe it, and that made it all worth it right there. Right then and there, I knew. I knew that. That's why I fought so hard, you know? That's why I fought so hard for him because it wasn't right. It wasn't right. Oh, and when I get the first treatment, when it's here something funny, when I got the first treatment, I could honestly hear ants walking. <laughs> you could hear ants walking? <coughs> Oh, that was funny. Man, I was like aware of everything. You found a new everything. drug. <laughs> yeah, it's that's... called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Man, listen. So... If I can get one of those machines and have them in my house, <laughs> Gina would be like, Brian, what are you doing? Where are you? <laughs> again? <laughs> you know, you're getting uh, magnetic stimulation situation. Anyway, praise the Lord because... Oh my God! It's working. It's been, it's been hell. I have walked through hell to get here with this man, but I would do it all over again because he deserves it, just like anybody else does. And God is good. And all so, the time. here's the message: Don't give up. Never. Do not give up. Now, I do not condone in any capacity abuse. Nope. There's, if, if you're a female and you're watching and you're dealing with somebody who's got issues and they're abusive to you, you gotta get some professional help and you've gotta put yourself in a safe environment. Um, Brian's not violent, but there was a lot of abuse, but I knew this going not in. Not physical abuse. Because, um, I have 30 years experience personally and professionally combined. Not only that, growing up, I watched my parents work with people just like Brian, who've got, had a lot of issues. This, this is in my blood, it's my DNA to have the, and God has, so God has equipped me uh, with the ability, wisdom, knowledge, whatever, to, to be able to navigate through this without being a victim. And this is not about me being a victim. I, I was the advocate who grabbed him by the hands and 
walk through the fire with him to get him out. So, but if you are in an abusive situation, get out now. Because number one, you don't deserve that. You have value, you, are, you have worth, you are special, you are loved, you are important, you are, uh, you are a child of God, and he wants the best for you. So um, I'm all about getting help for other people, but you, if, again, um, domestic abuse is unacceptable. Unacceptable. So you can get help for somebody from a distance, right? Get yourself and your children safe first, always and um, let the professor. So, my battery's dying and we're gonna eat and we're gonna go upstairs and film some more for the next show. There'll be a follow-up show to see how Brian's life has changed. So we're working on that. So, um, anyway, thank you guys, everybody who tuned in. And we'll give, you, we'll give you some more updates soon. Beauty and the Beauty and the uh, Beauty and the Boxer. That's the name of the show. Beauty and the Boxer. All right, come on, somebody. Bye, guys.